Now the engine was dynamited for parts. The Hetler was built in 1889, one year before the last fully rigged sailing ship was made for the Great Lakes. So she was built with three masts, and then she went over and transitioned to a 485 horsepower compound steam engine. And compound just meant that it ran two things, it ran the propeller and the steam hoist. steam came out in the early 1800s in ships. It had been out for a couple hundred years, but they started putting motors into these ships. And actually, the people that built ships, the shipwrights, were getting a lot of letters from captains, old captains. And these captains in these letters were saying to them, stop doing this. You're crazy. Everybody knows we've been sailing for thousands of years, and that's worked well so far. These newfangled steam engines aren't going to catch on. And it took about six decades to catch on. And then within a year of building the Hetler, they said, no more masts, we want engines. So the Hetler was truly a transitional vessel. Now we're going to get a little bit more shallow, between 11 and 14 feet down. We'll go over the port side, the left front side of this ship. So you can imagine driving out here and seeing half of a ship sitting upright, and you don't see what she's sitting on. Truly an eerie sight. She's been down about 86 years laying here. So this part of the Hetler was dynamited in 1929. See these little rectangular openings are the scuppers. That's where the water would wash off the deck. So you can see the deck is at the top space here. And the Hetler was a predecessor designed to our modern day freighters. So 700 to 1,000 foot lakers that are out there. She was built up in the front, up in the back, and she had that long deck space in the middle. The only difference is she was a little bit more rounded. And she also had three masts and a smoke pipe on the back. These open seats are where they stuck the dynamite to blast this part off of the reef. That hoist wheel is sitting right above the deck space, and you'll notice the deck space abruptly stops and then goes up into the captain's cabin. The captain's cabin had those port holes over here, and on top of the captain's cabin was the pilot house to steer the ship, but that's been totally demolished. A little bit of the paint still left on the Hetler on those nail heads down there, kind of looks like coins on the side of the ship. And there's a raised rail that goes down the middle. That's just a rub rail. And just below my feet, you'll notice the metal sheeting. This is riveted in before the days of welding. And we're coming up over our port side anchor. This anchor, I know it doesn't look it, but she is eight feet tall and five feet wide, 2,500 pounds. And she actually was salvaged many years ago, and it sat on a guy's lawn in Agani, Michigan, for years. And then when he retired and left out of state, he kindly donated this back to its original shipwreck. And he painted it this pretty blue. It doesn't yet usually buy an anchor for commercial shipping in pretty blue. <laughs> and if I dove down there now and laid next to that anchor, you can see how truly big it is, eight feet tall. Captain, Joe, Captain Joe's sister said we should tie a Barbie to that anchor. <laughs> you know, it might scare the kids unless you put a mermaid fit on it or something. <laughs> yeah. Now this metal sheeting was riveted in and it was very necessary for this ship because she was known to come up in front and crash the ice. She was outfitted also with an extra strong bow. They didn't have Coast Guard cutters, so she made her own path through the ice. Now the captain's going to take us up over the reef, and we'll do kind of a little jump up a little bit closer, about 10 feet. And if you keep looking down, there's some blue-black rock down there. There's pockets of it. And this was caused from the M.M. Drake. The M.M. Drake is another ship. She also got caught up on this reef and stuck. But she dumped a hundred tons of iron ore, and they yeah. was lighting up, and they pulled her free. But the iron ore is still down here, just sitting around within the sandstone. There's some of it. And we're going to get as close as seven feet before we go to the edge. Every once in a while down in the sandstone, too, you might notice it looks like Morse code dashed and dotted into the rock. That's where other ships have just crashed and just kind of scraped across the sandstone.
and here we go down to 25. So when the hit the hit, the sailors say that the ship went up in the front, 210 feet long, 36 feet wide, but I believe that they hit hard enough that it went up back to the third cargo hatch. So this thing was actually pointed up in the air for a bit. Now the captain's new as well. And ours, we just gave a couple of old dads down here, just those long pipes. You've got the highlight of your tour over there, folks. It's that long, skinny white line in the circle next to it. That's the captain's bathtub and commode to the heather. What? <laughs> the captain's name really was John Johnson, so that's John Johnson's John. <laughs> Backside the handler, and after three days, got ripped off in a storm. Just shredded. There's a lot of shredded machinery parts and wood and stuff down here. That tube down there, that's a piece of the smokestack. She fell apart in three pieces, and that's a 10 foot section. And then a lot more junk. See railroad track, pieces of machinery. There's our big Fred Flintstone bolt down there. I just make up names for things. <laughs> Thank you. 